What essential oils and other flavor compounds are safe to ingest when you put them in food and drink? That's the question I'm gonna answer for you today. Because once you understand this, it opens up a whole new world of flavors, whether you're making non-alcoholic drinks, starting a soda company, making cocktails behind a bar, or just a chef looking for new flavors to work with. Once you understand what a food grade product is, you can start using it safely, it opens up a whole new world of flavors. So let's talk about it. I'm Darcy O'Neill, this is Art of Drink, and uh, there's a lot of confusion about what food grade is. Now food grade is just a generic term. Uh, it applies more to materials now because you can't really have food grade food. Food is food. And most of these here qualify, but it's one of those things where you need to be careful when you're using it. There is an expectation by the FDA and most other flavor organizations and governmental organizations that require food to be used at concentrations found in nature. So the one thing about essential oils is they're unnatural. You do not find essential oils seeping out of a tree or a flower. Uh, humans intervene with these, we take them, we concentrate them. That becomes an unnatural concentration of flavor in a small amount. We want to use them in parts per million, so 50 parts per million be one metric drop, which is 0.05 milliliters in something of a one liter size, so this is a one liter bottle. So one drop in that is 50 parts per million. That's the expectation. So you do not need to use a lot of flavor compounds. So only a few drops per liter. So that's the safety starting point. I'm going to do another video on mixing these properly to get them in the proper concentrations. But today I'm just gonna focus on how to identify what is a safe essential oil, that's food grade, and where to find those. So let's get into that part. So one of the most frequently asked questions I get on this site or on this channel is how to identify food safe essential oils. Most people will go and look up on an essential oil provider and they'll see that the essential oil company has labeled them as therapeutic grade. And most people are looking for something they believe is called food grade. Now, food grade food is not a thing. So what you're actually looking for is what the FDA calls grass or generally recognized as safe. And the FDA back in the 1950s and 1960s compiled a list of foods that are generally recognized as safe. And those include things like lemon oil and all the things we eat. Though the FDA does make a note that it's impossible for them to list all the ingredients. But for flavor profiles, for working with sodas and stuff, almost everything in there, in here, is listed. Certain exceptions uh, apply. So if it's not on the grass white list, which is basically the truly safe, the foods we use in everyday cooking, you'll find food chemicals or concentrates, which will have usage recommendations, or you'll find other things that are only allowed to be used in, for example, alcoholic beverages. And then you'll find there's a very small list of truly banned foods, or they're not even foods, but they're just banned because of the chemical composition. Tonka beans are one of them. Now I have tonka beans because the, those these show up in a lot of old recipes. You can't make a tonka bean soda composition and sell it, but you're allowed to do whatever you want to your own body. But I bought them because, you know, getting uh, the aroma profile of them allows me to work with food safe ingredients to kind of come up with something close. One of the ones, another one that's a really common one in the cocktail world is tobacco. You are not allowed to use tobacco in food. You can buy tobacco flavorings. I think I have one up here, but you can't actually, you'll never get FDA approval to soak a cigar into you know, whiskey and then serve that to people. That's just, it shows up a lot. I don't recommend it. Um, there's too much nicotine in these that can actually cause a severe reaction. But they do smell wonderful, and again, smoke them, don't drink them. So beyond that, when you're looking for grass information, the FDA has these long lists. If you're a Patreon subscriber, I've put together a kind of a cheat sheet of all the compounds you're allowed to use. Otherwise, I've linked down below to the FDA site, and there's multiple sections that you can go through to find 
ingredient usage rates. And there's another site called FEMA Grass. FEMA is not the Federal Emergency Management Agency. It is the Flavor Extracts Manufacturers Association. And they basically, they're a group that represents all the producers of these compounds. But the nice thing about the FEMA Grass website is they have all the documentation for what is considered generally recognized as safe. You can look it up. But what you really, really need to know is, can I use this compound? And then you check that against the FDA database. And if it is approved in grass, you do not need further approval to use it. So the next question is, how do you identify what you know, essential oils you can use? So when it comes to sourcing essential oils and other flavor compounds to use in your beverages or your food, uh, what you're really looking for is some kind of certification that it's 100% natural. And there are a few companies that do that. United States Pharmacopeia and the Food Chemical Codex, so FCC and USP are the designations. You'll often find that on large packaging. So if it's FCC or USP, it meets a industry standard for food safety. You usually find it on food chemicals, not on essential oils. But if you're looking for like a preservative, sodium benzoate, because you need to preserve your soda, uh, those will usually come with an FCC or a USP designation. That means they're food, you can include them in food. As for essential oils, you don't find designations like that. And again, you're not gonna find food grade, though some do. You, you may be able to find some suppliers that provide it. But what you're really looking for is 100% natural designation. Most of the suppliers I deal with provide that documentation. And again, if you're a Patreon member, I will provide a list of my suppliers where I buy these. I've been buying things from some, many of these companies for like 12 years. So I have no working relationship with them. So it's just a recommendation on Patreon. The reason I don't provide recommendations here is because some of these companies don't wanna to have to deal with people asking them questions about how they can use these to ingest. Uh, they just don't want that hassle, fair enough. So I'm willing to explain how to use these. These are all natural. Some companies do provide that information. And again, if you're a Patreon member, even on the lowest level, I will give you basically a full sheet of my suppliers, where to find the documentation. And that's the important part, documentation. When you buy an essential oil, uh, you want to be able to identify that it's 100% natural. And if it is, and it's on the FDA grass list, you can use that essential oil in food. As long as you use good manufacturing practices, which means you're using them at a natural level. And so with those three considerations, that's how you're going to identify which essential oils you can use. Find a company that will guarantee that their products are 100% natural. Uh, they don't use cutting agents or solvents, and that will give you the starting point to use the essential oil to make soda ingredients or flavorings. So what do you want to avoid? Specifically, you want to avoid anything that's called a fragrance oil or a scented oil. Uh, those are perfuming ingredients. Now there is crossover. A lot of essential oils are used in perfume, but there are, are some ingredients used in perfume that are not food safe. And again, perfume is an all encompassing term for any odorant, whether it's used in soap or cologne or perfume. Some of those ingredients are not grass and they tend to be chemicals in nature or certain florals. Uh, again, some flowers, are not edible, uh, but they do make good perfume. So that crossover is not allowed. So don't look for fragrance oils or scented oils. Uh, those are a different class of compound. You're looking for 100% natural. And if you are ordering aroma chemicals, so like concentrates like methyl benzoate, uh, order them from a supplier that provides food grade chemicals. Again, on the list I provide, I will provide 
a couple companies that supply that, but there are major suppliers that uh, I will link to in the Patreon document, and they'll, but they supply one kilo or above. The smaller company supplies it in everything from five mil vials up to you know, 80 mil vials. So look for uh, something that is 100% natural. Try not to buy stuff off Amazon unless you they have you, the the seller has a website where you can get some documentation. Um, I find Amazon a little bit sketchy. Their marketplace just allows anybody to sell anything, and trying to find something with proper documentation can be difficult on Amazon. It's almost like a dead end if you need to prove something. So uh, avoid those large marketplaces again. Find a dedicated seller that provides good documentation. And most dedicated suppliers of essential oils and food chemicals will be able to provide you documentation either online, some of them provide it when you order it, so it comes with the email and your order. And other ones you just simply either have to call or send them an email and they'll send you like a certificate of analysis or an all natural composition form. And also the other thing is, you know, you can check out their websites and you can see that, you know, maybe they'll have an FDA inspection certificate or a Canadian food inspection agency certificate. Some of them will have their organic certificates. So if that's important to you, you'll be able to see all this stuff. So the ones, these essential oil companies that do this properly provide copious amounts of documentation. One even provides uh, GC mass spec data. So you can actually see every compound in their essential oils. Uh, that's, that's really useful if you've studied chemistry, maybe not for the general person, but for me, I find it very interesting. So again, Amazon's a little sketchy. Try to find a dedicated seller that's going to provide you documentation. And the last thing to avoid is sketchy YouTuber advice. There's a lot of it out there. I will give you the real facts. I will point you in the right directions. My whole goal for this is for you to be able to use these food compounds safely because it does open up a whole new world of flavors. You can start your own soda company doing this type of stuff if that interests you. You can make flavors that people have never tried before. It's one of those things that if you have a career in drinks or you're just a super curious person, this is the way to do it. Uh, again, sketchy advice. There are some good channels out there, but if, if it sounds sketchy, yeah, skip it. Here's some important closing advice. Use common sense. Like if you don't eat it regularly, ask yourself whether you should be putting it in food. And that leads to the second piece of advice is if you don't know what you're working with, the, the basic starting point is to go to Google or your favorite search engine, type in the name of the compound you're going to use or the essential oil or the food ingredient and type G-R-A-S after it. And that will at least pull up some information as to whether it is generally recognized as safe. Other than tobacco, one of the other big things you'll see is bartenders taking pieces of wood that are not oak or food safe. Uh, so some exotic wood and then trying to flavor a whiskey or a rum with it. If that wood is not food safe, you can't use it to give to other people. You can experiment on yourself but you can't be feeding people stuff that's not generally recognized as safe in a restaurant or as a beverage. So uh, that's one of the ones, uh, wood, anybody who's a woodworker knows that certain woods have toxicity values. So if you don't know what it is, ask a question. Again, I have a level on Patreon that if you do have an important question and you wanna jump ahead of the line of all the questions I already get, uh, that's the way to do it. And with that level in Patreon, I'll spend a little more time looking things up. I can't guarantee an answer, but I will help try to get you an answer or definitely point you in the right direction. So just a quick review of what we just learned before you start using your essential oils and flavor compounds in your drinks and your food. One, does it meet the generally recognized as safe standard set by whatever country you are in? Usually you can find that stuff online. If it does, then you are allowed to use it. The second part, can you find a source that will supply you 100% natural compounds? And if they're not 100% natural, will they provide you a guarantee that they are food safe? If they can, 
then you can use them. And then the third part is, are you going to follow good manufacturing practices to prepare your sodas, your beverages, your food with these essential oils? Now that's what I'm gonna be talking about in my next video, so feel free to subscribe, and I'll show you how to work with these where they do meet good manufacturing practices. So if you can meet those three requirements, you can use them even if the supplier says they're only therapeutic grade. As long as they're 100% natural, they're good to go. Well, I got some cleanup and organization to do, so thanks for watching. I will see you in the next one.